This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. We start out today in China, which just passed a historical milestone. It now has the most vehicles on the planet. According to the Ministry of Public Security, there are 390 million vehicles registered in China, of which 297 million are passenger vehicles. According to Ward's intelligence, there are 289 million vehicles in the United States and 269 million in Western Europe. But it was only a matter of time before China had the most vehicles. It has four times the population of the U.S. or Western Europe. But the most recent sales story in China is the same as everywhere else in the world. Sales are plunging because of the chip shortage. They fell 20% last month. But sales of new energy vehicles, which includes BEVs and hybrids, were up more than 200% and captured 17% of the total Chinese market. Tesla led the way. It sold a stunning 52,000 cars in China last month, including 33,000 Model Ys. Tesla also exported 3,800 cars, so in total, it sold over 56,000 Chinese-made cars. And that means it's now running at a production rate of 600,000 vehicles a year at its plant in Shanghai. Hey, maybe solar panels on cars actually make sense after all. Toyota, like most automakers, is forming partnerships to improve its environmental impact. So it teamed up with the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science in Japan to develop carbon neutral technologies. And one thing that caught our eye is that they plan to develop cars with solar panels. Unfortunately, Toyota didn't provide any other details, but it's not the first automaker to equip vehicles with solar panels. Hyundai and Kia offered them on their hybrids to help charge the battery. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. To know what's going on in the auto industry, you need to be up to speed on all the latest vocabulary. So here are some new terms to learn. Digital Twin, as well as SIL, HIL, MIL, and DIL. Engineers now develop new cars in the virtual world where they make a virtual model, what they call a digital twin, which can do exactly what a car does in the real world. They can test out everything before they ever have to build a prototype, which saves a ton of time and money. And there are various components that go into making a digital twin. Hardware in the loop, or HIL, That refers to the parts and components that are developed in simulation. Then there's software in the loop, or SIL. Same thing, only it applies to software. And then there's MIL, or model in the loop. That includes the entire car, both software and hardware. And then there's DIL, or driver in the loop, where drivers can drive the car in simulation to see how it performs. All these inputs, HIL, SIL, MIL, and DIL, are used to make the digital twin more accurate, and it can reduce the time it takes to develop a new model by nearly a year. Ford has a van for practically every occasion in Europe, and it's showing off its newest people mover, the Torneo Connect. The all-new version of the van gets styling inspiration from its passenger cars, but you'll notice some nuance between the different trims, like the Active model, which features extra black cladding, a honeycomb grille pattern, and unique 17-inch wheels. There's both a short and long wheelbase version available, and seating for up to seven people with three rows of seats. Sticking with the interior for a moment, an eight and a quarter inch center display screen is standard, but there's a 10-incher available, that can combine with an optional 10 and a quarter inch digital instrument cluster. Under the hood will be a range of gas and diesel engines, 
which can be mated to either a six-speed manual or seven-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive is also available for the first time on the model. Orders for the new Torneo Connect open early next year, with deliveries to customers kicking off in the spring. Honda says the new Civic Si will be revealed, quote, soon, but in the meantime, it's showing how some of its engineers are developing a version of the car for on-track competition. We think that strongly suggests the new Civic Si will be doing some racing, but we should know more soon. Mopar always has something fun in store for SEMA, and this year is no different. It's showing off a number of design sketches of the vehicles it will have on display, which hints at some pretty cool concepts. One looks like a modified version of the Wrangler 4xe, or it could also be a Gladiator. Another looks like a 4xe version of the Ram pickup, and possibly even a version of the T-Rex. It will also have a military-style off-roader, and we're guessing it has a modified Wagoneer or Grand Wagoneer as well. But we'll learn more around the time SEMA kicks off on November 2nd. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. General Motors reached a settlement with LG Chem over faulty batteries in Chevy Bolt EVs that could lead to fires. And LG is going to pay for $1.9 billion of the $2 billion that the recall cost. GM was forced to recall more than 140,000 Bolt EVs and EUVs because of a manufacturing defect in the battery that could cause it to catch fire. Last month, GM and LG came out with a fix for the batteries, but prior to that, GM told owners to park their cars outside and not charge them overnight. And we've got more info on GM's Ultra Cruise feature, which will make its debut in an unnamed 2023 Cadillac. It will provide hands-free driving in 95% of all situations, including on highways and surface streets. It will make left and right hand turns, handle stop and go situations like traffic lights, and will even park in your driveway. About the only thing it can't handle right now are roundabouts. It uses LiDAR, radar, and cameras. It also uses maps that GM generated, not bought from third parties. When GM launched Super Cruise, it had 130,000 miles of roads mapped in the US and Canada that the system could use. It now has 200,000 miles of mapped roads. But Ultra Cruise will launch with over 2 million miles of mapped roads, and it will go to 3.4 million miles after that. GM's vision is for drivers to be able to drive from Michigan to Florida, a 21-hour trip, and have 20 hours of that be hands-free. And if you'd like to learn more about the design of the new Ford Maverick pickup, be sure to tune in to AutoLine After Hours on Thursday afternoon. Our guest will be Scott Anderson, who led the interior design team. That truck has a lot of clever design features, including door trim that uses plastic regrind, yet it looks pretty good. That's all this Thursday on AutoLine After Hours, starting at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in and we'll be right back here again tomorrow. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.